بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أي لحظة في الله with regards to continuing on in our halakha <coughs> in our halakhat of fiqh and ahkam of Ramadan and some of the benefits of Ramadan in preparation for Ramadan I wanted to mention another hadith about the importance of our intention and our intention of Habitifillah as we know that in order to have our deeds accepted in Islam whatever form of ibadah that we're doing it is built upon two things so we're, ne never forget this al asl <clears throat> in our ibadat this aslain our all of our worship is built upon these two things the first thing al ikhlas lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa thaniyan mutaba Sunnah Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the first thing is that we have sincerity to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in whatever we're doing. That we worship only Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We fast for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We make salat for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We make the Hajj for the sake of Allah Taala, <coughs> etc. All of the acts of worship, we do it for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Talib al Ilm for the sake of Allah Taala, etc. And the second being that is in conformity, that act of worship with the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu meaning that we can't fast in a new way. We can't say, well, I want to fast similar to maybe some of the Jews fast and they, uh, I think they don't eat dairy products or something during their fast or, you know, or the seven day of Venice, they have a particular interesting fast or this community. No. You are restricted to fasting like the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is the best guidance, and it's the guidance to get you to Jannah. So whatever form of ibadah we do, it has to conform to the, what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did and said. And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, Man athata fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fu rad. Whoever innovates in this affair of us will have it rad. So don't listen to anyone who tells you that... Uh, uh, bid'ah is has five ahkam, khamsa ahkam, that there's bid'ah which is uh, halal, or, or, or uh, and then there's bid'ah mustahab, there's bid'ah that's recommended, or that there's bid'ah that's makru, and there's bid'ah that's mubah, and there's bid'ah that's haram. La, don't listen to that, these kind of uh, strange ahkam, but rather go back to the nasus. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever innovates in this matter of ours will have it rejected. And then in another ruwayah, man, uh, man amala 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 whoever does something with regards to uh, our affairs that, that is not in accordance with our affairs will have it rejected. So letting us know, kullu bid'atin dalala, as the Prophet wasallam, that all bid'ah is leading astray, meaning bid'ah in ibadat, in, in our forms of worship. And of course, our aqidah and all those things related to Islam. That doesn't mean bid'ah in technology. For example, we now use the laptop, we're using YouTube, we're using the camera, we're using this. No, this is not what we're talking about technology, but bid'ah here is in reference to worship in Islam. Ahabbatifillah, this hadith is going to tell to illustrate for us the importance of our intention that when Ramadan is approaching that you should make your intention the night before to fast the following day. وعن حفصة أم المؤمنين رضي الله تعالى عنها أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من لم يبيت الصيام قبل الفجر فلا صيام له رواه خمسة وما لا ترمذي من نسائي إلى ترجيح وقفه وصحه مرفوع ابن خزيمة وابن هبان وللدار قطني لا سيام لمن لم يفرده من من الليل. In this uh, these hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the hadith of Hafsa Um al Mu'minin رضي الله تعالى عنها, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, whoever does not uh, 
prepare or make their intention uh, to fast before Fajr, then they don't have, then there's no fast for them. In this hadith, Ahabatifillah, this hadith uh, illustrates for us the importance, the first issue that arises here is the, what is the ruling pertaining to making our intention to fast the obligatory fast, which is like Ramadan before Fajr. So, as we mentioned, that our intention is very important, and it is an asl min usul ad din As the Prophet ﷺ said, That the Prophet ﷺ said, every action is in accordance with his intention, and every intention, uh, everyone will get that for what he intended. So, we must, it is one of the most uh, important as Al Hafiz, and I'm sure uh, <coughs> uh, Ibn Hajr, Rahimullah Ta'ala, Hafiz Ibn Hajr mentioned, he said, This hadith, Ma yudillu ala anna min ahamma shurud sihat siyam al fard ka Ramadan wa qada'ahi wa qada'ahu mithlin and tattakadma niya as siyam kabla duhul fihi. يعني من الليل وأوله أو وسطه أو آخره. That Imam Ibn Hajr, حفظه الله تعالى, and others said that this hadith is a very clear evidence for that this is one of the most important conditions for a sound fast, obligatory fast. You know, if you want your fast accepted, of course we fast not for yoga, we don't fast for dietary reasons. We're fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we've been commanded to do so in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So for that reason, because we want reward, we want forgiveness, we want mercy, uh, in order to receive those things from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we must fulfill the conditions of that act of worship. Especially because it's an obligatory fast, and that is making our intention from the evening, you know, before Fajr, to fast that Ramadan. And one of the A'imma said in his book called, entitled Al Ifsah, he said, What tafaku. So the scholars are in agreement that it is an obligation to make this intention to fast uh, the obligatory fast for the holy month of Ramadan and that it is not, not permissible without this intention. So very important to be aware of this and it is not necessary that you pronounce anything on your tongue that you say, I'm going to fast tomorrow. The holy month of Ramadan is beginning. I, my, you know, to, it is not a, a condition upon you or anything to utter this on your tongue, but, act, but actually the mahal and niya is the qalb, as the ulama say. Mahal and niya, a qalb, is the, the place of the intention is in the heart. So it is not necessary for you to to uh, to pronounce your intention. Another issue which comes up is during the whole month of Ramadan. Is it sufficient to do it one time to make your intention uh, once in the beginning of Ramadan, or is it necessary for every night to make this intention? This uh, is another issue that the ulama have differed or, differed over, and there are two views. So the scholars, they differed over this. So Imam, uh, the majority of the ulama, and from them is in accordance with the 
uh, Hanafi madhab, Shafi'i madhab, and Imam Ahmed is that uh, every day it is necessary to make this intention. And that each one of these days uh, is like an a individual day of ibadah. So it requires that you make this intention. Because if you, uh, and then some of the logic behind it, la yufsid somahu bi fasad som ghayruhu. Uh, that each one of these days, they can be accepted or not accepted. Meaning you could do something during one of those days in Ramadan and end up breaking your fast. So each one of those days, illustrating that it's each day is a form of ibadah mustaqillah. It's, it's an individual day for, of, of worship. So this is part of their logic of those imams uh, who held this view, which is the majority of view. The other view, and this is the madhab of Imam Malik, and one of the ruwayah on Imam Ahmed, one of the uh, statements of Imam Ahmed as well, is that it is permissible to make your intention uh, at the beginning of the month, to fast the whole month, uh, Uh, for, for Ramadan. So, <clears throat> as long as your, your fasting was not interrupted by travel or sickness or some, some other reason that made it permissible to break your fast, like the woman during her height, her men menstrual cycle, if it came during Ramadan, and then she missed some days, then she was able to fast, say if it came in the middle of Ramadan and she missed a week, and then she had another week after she became pure or something like this, then she would require for her, according to this view, to make another uh, intention the night she was going to, uh, the night preceding the day she would fast. So, ala kulli hal, this is some of the differences regarding this, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Me, myself, I go with the jamhur on this, the majority of scholars, and that you should make this intention, this individual intention, and, and your, this is definitely the safest opinion, uh, before each uh, night before fasting, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.